High on Life might be one of the funniest and most entertaining games that I've personally played in an extremely long time. Like, games that try to be funny can come across as being really cringy, or it can annoy you for trying to force being funny, which we all absolutely hate. But with High on Life, I found myself laughing out loud more times than I can count. Ultimately, it's a very basic game in its nature. It's not the overall mission design or level design that this game is striving to be good at. It's not a game that you can compare with the likes of God of War for a story or Elden Ring Freak's gameplay. But if you're looking for a game to chill, have a genuine fun, and just burst out laughing on some of the stupid comments that these characters make, and some of the absolutely hilarious interactions that you come across, some being really weird but really funny, I really, really strongly recommend High on Life. Now today, I want to talk through the story of High on Life, explain it to you guys and what it means, go into a little bit of a brief review throughout that period as well, just to let you know how this game is and if it's worth playing or not, and ultimately, should you go ahead and purchase this game? Look, from a story perspective, it's pretty straightforward, but there are some things you may have missed throughout. So, leave a like on today's video, it would be very much appreciated. Subscribe to the channel if you're brand new as well, or an existing viewer, uh, that would be absolutely amazing. We're so close to our goal of 20,000 subscribers, so one final push before the end of the year to get us there would be absolutely amazing. But, let's dive straight in to the video. High on Life starts in one of the best ways possible. A retro starting screen, taking you straight into a Doom-esque game, and throwing it back to the good old days. Check, check, hello, can you read me? Buck Thunder, Buck, Buck, oh, it's me, Bill, your divorce attorney. Welcome to Buck Thunder 2, Xeno Slaughter. Another Buck Thunder game. Your ex-wife is back and more evil than ever. She's sending a bunch of her new blood-sucking boyfriends out. So go shoot them, just kill them all, Buck. That's, that's the game. Buck, it's me, Phil, your divorce lawyer again. You remember how to move and jump and everything, right? There's shit on the screen that tells you how to do all that stuff. I mean, come on, Buck. This is the second game. You know how to do all this shit. We start off as a character named Buck Thunder, where our divorce attorney, Rick from Rick and Morty, is taking us through how to play the game, telling us that a load of our ex-wives' boyfriends are there in which we've got to try and go and kill. It turns out that an alien spaceship landed in our wife's backyard, and it turns out that she fell in love with the leader, and essentially started fucking him. Alright Buck, you're gonna have to use the brand new double jump to get over there. Oh shit, I'm sorry Buck, I forgot there's no double jump, just crouch. We gotta try crouching, Buck. Fucking scheduling and scoping bullshit. A fucking crouch prioritized over a double jump. Who is this? Who, who are these people above us? But because it's a hive mind, she's essentially <laughs> fucking all of them. This just sets the tone as to what you can expect going further on into this game, so just bear that in mind. Suddenly, we hear a voice in the background, and we're pulled away from our video game, and sat on our bed is our sister named Lizzie. Our parents are out of town and put Lizzie in charge. She decided she wanted to throw a bit of a party and make it a big one. She then pulls out a mirror with a few lines of what looks like to be talcum powder, because YouTube will demonetize if it's anything other than talcum powder. So, it turns out that this talcum powder covering the mirror is our character creator. Very creative there. We move downstairs and make our way outside with Lizzie, and suddenly, a spaceship drops out of nowhere into the middle of our road. A bunch of aliens walk out. However, Mr. Pilfrey next door didn't really understand what was going on at that stage. He's got that, um... What's it called? Uh, dementia. Uh, what's going on out here? Martha? Is that you? Oh my god! Oh my god! What did they just do to Mr. Pilfrey? <laughs> the alien in the center picks up Mr. Pilfrey and smokes him? Something's really weird here. Anyway, the aliens finish up and shoot one of the members before taking off again. However, when he dies, Something starts to make a really strange and loud and annoying noise. We make our way over, and it turns out to be his weapon. We pick it up, and it just then spits all over us. Did that thing just spit all Finally! Oh my god, finally I'm free, thank god! What a nightmare! Listen, can you pull the inhibitor chip out of me? It's the metal thing stuck in me, just pull oh, it out! What the fuck is that? 
Oh, that feels so much better. Thank you. Yeah, sorry about the spit. I I, I needed to get you infected with the translator microbes. That, that, that's sort of how it works. I guess you guys don't have those here yet. Listen, my name's Kenny. I'm a Gatlian. Uh, we we gotta kind of we gotta oh, move. What is it? Is it talking to you? Maybe we should go back to the Ignore house. Ignore her. It's very important that you listen to everything I say. Okay, it is your lucky day right now. We can survive this together if you just listen to me. The G3 guys are going to turn your whole species into drugs. Can you handle a gun? Because, you know, I'm kind of a gun, and if you don't use me to kill those G3 grunts, you know, they're going to fucking kill us. This was the voice of Morty from Rick and Morty. Really, really cool there. It turns out this weapon spat on us and infected us with some translator microbe in order for us to understand what the heck it's saying. Which explains why it was just making noises before and tells us exactly what's happening here. We need to use this weapon to kill the species that are surrounding us before they turn our entire planet into grunts and use the humans for their drug trafficking acts. The aliens that are invading Earth right now are all from the G3 drug cartel and that big guy is Garmantuous. However, I paused the game quickly, you know, to make a couple of notes for this video, and Kenny the Weapon starts taking the piss out of me for pausing the game. What the fuck? You just paused the game. This doesn't help at all. Are you an idiot? Everyone knows pause button. In what fucking game is the pause button shoot? Do you really not know what button to press? You just keep hitting buttons, triggers, all of them. One of them's gonna make me shoot. I love this game, man. Like. <laughs> Anyway, we get back into the house with a warp crystal and get the hell out of there. We finally wake up and open the door to see where we've warped to. And Kenny, where are we? Yeah, welcome to fucking space! Kenny has a plan to take down Garmantuous. However, in order to do so, we need to enlist the help of someone called Gene Zaruthian. Gene was a legend of Blim City, oh, this incredible bounty hunter that's super well known across the si Wait, is that him over there on that bench? Gene's lost his legs and lost one of his eyes, and recently was evicted from his house. But noticed our house behind us as we were talking, and takes a pretty big liking to it. This bounty hunter Gene wouldn't help us directly take down Garmantuous, but what he would do is something even better, turn us into a bounty hunter give us his suit and everything and all of his equipment, and in return if we die, he gets our house. We agree to these terms, and we put on his suit, move to the pawn shop to get a bounty license, but not the license you think to like kill people, but one for the actual suit itself. Gene forgot to renew the license before he ended up on this bench, meaning that loads of ads kept showing up on the screen, like we've got the light version of this bounty suit. We get the license key, make our way back to the house with an amazing controller tutorial by our in suit helper. Hey, you can run, you know. You, you, I don't know if you do that. Try hitting the button on your screen. I, I can't say the name of the button because I have no fucking clue what kind of controller or keyboard you're using. We get back to the house and Gene's already made himself a home. Gene's set up our main hub for the game, the Bounty 5000, in our living room. This will allow us to track down all of our different targets throughout the story and eventually get into the big boy, Garmantuous. So, for our first bounty, someone called Nine Talk. Nine Talk is based in the slums somewhere in Blim City, so that's exactly where we start off. We move to the gateway to the slums, tell the red thing that he's hotter, yes, I'm not joking, and he lets us in. We move down to the bottom and meet the most annoying kid on Earth. This kid will not leave us alone until we physically have to kill him. The fact that we can even do this is absolutely crazy. <laughs> We take out a couple of drones that are trying to hunt us down as bounty hunting is apparently illegal in the slums and we move out to find our target, Nine Talk. Well, I, I didn't think we'd be allowed to kill him. Yeah, normally, killing children in games isn't isn't allowed, but he's dead. We killed this kid. Are, are you happy now? We killed a kid. A kid is dead now. However, we actually do find out that this wasn't a kid and that he was actually 30 years old. So he's not a kid. YouTube, don't demonetize me. We kill loads of ants that shit talk us from fighting them and move to the docks to find Nine Talk. Nine Talk is one of the many Talk gang lords. The number resembles the number that they're assigned to at birth. Very self-explanatory there. There were like 30 talks, but they kept killing each other to try and take each other's territory. So there's only like 10 left. <laughs> when playing through this game, I loved the detail that you could see around the screen. It wasn't just a case of jumping through and seeing the 
really well designed places, but also you would very occasionally get messages pop up on the left hand side of the screen. One being when Jean messages us on the left asking to borrow something in our room, and then for us to just not touch it again after he's finished with it and that scares me anyway one of the side missions as well before we get into nine talk is to find gene's old knife we get to it we find it it's in some form of drug deal and i've got to say it's interesting to say the least a genuine talking knife i gotta be honest with you he's a real piece of shit he's extremely violent he basically only talks about wanting to kill people in very disturbing ways fuck you i'm gonna carve out your anal cavity gonna make it three times as big your shit's just gonna drop right out of there <laughs> see what i'm talking about oh uh, perfect that's exactly what we're looking for yeah yeah great go ahead feel free to inspect it try him out see how he feels in your hand yeah yeah fucking free me let's go let's go psycho on these fuckers fuck yes thank you pleased to meet you i'm knifey now use me use me let me fucking stab these cocks oh fuck fuck yes more more i need more stabbing hey you listen point me at your raw fleshy little tummy and jab me right into there let's get all those guts torn up let's see that fucking red goop spill out i can't stop now oh uh, that's a pass for us is this really the knife gene was talking about gene did you just say Gene? Okay, change of plans. Bring me to Gene so I can fucking decapitate him! Wait, what, what? After we take the knife and escape the compound, we finally find and kill Nine Talk and befriend Five Talk. Fun fact, I accidentally hit Nine Talk when trying to free her, and it starts another boss battle. So I killed her too. And no more Five Talk. Sorry. <laughs> now that our first bounty is out of the way, return to the house and speak with Gene. Anyway, we have two new targets, Krubus and Douglas. Zephyr Paradise. Gorgeous, huh? Howdy! I'm Quentin the Grinton! Welcome oh, to the Oh shit, Roo. the G3 Grinton. Okay, now the cartel knows we're here. We move through to kill Krubus first, who seems to be based in Zephyr's jungle. And as we move through, we meet a species called the Moplets. We save them from the G3 cartel, and they tell us that someone in the mansion could help us find the location of Krubis. The Moplets were enslaved by the G3 in order to be used as their high. You'll see in just a moment when we get to the mansion, it's pretty weird. Oh, fuck yeah. Oh, hey, you made it. You got my fresh Fergals. What? Yeah, this is the guy we're looking for. So this is where we find out that there's no narcotics involved here. Like, this is the G3 cartel using actual beings to smoke and inhale their drugs or fumes or whatever, so that's what gives people highs here. Anyway, we take the clean warp disc that we needed and continue to try and find Krubus, and we eventually reach his offices where we thought he might be. And there is where we meet Helen for the very first time. Uh, excuse me? <sighs> I've gotta go. We'll talk more later. Bye, Merle. I'm so sorry. I didn't see you there. I'm Helen. I just need to know, are you the new hire or the new boss? Uh, as a matter of fact, um, I, I am. I am the new boss. Absolutely. Yeah, right. You're not, honey. <laughs> That's funny, though. I like it when the new hires have a sense of humor. <laughs> Let's get you all set up. Head on into the next room and find a place to work. Go on without me. I haven't left this chair in years, and I don't plan to start now. <laughs> We move into our workstation and actually file some paperwork. And then we finally make our way into Krubus' office. Here we find his coordinates and suddenly on screen, there's Garmantuous. It turns out that the G3 cartel were using the species to inhale and use their drugs to begin with. However, ever since they found humanity on Earth, they've been even better fix when smoking them. So, rather than actual narcotics, the G3 cartel used beings as their drugs. And that was why Mr. Pilfrey was literally smoked at the beginning of the game. Anyway, we find his coordinates, warped his base in to replace the mansion, and take out Krubis. We find a new weapon when doing so, and his name is Gus, so we take him with us. He's the... The name's Gus. Feel good to meet you. Look at you, man. Pretty slick taking out Krubus like that. Rescuing me from indentured servitude, etc., etc. I love that kind of stuff. You know what? I love that. That's the kind of stuff I love, man. The next bounty, Douglas. Douglas was the G3 chief of training. 
We move on to Dragtown, which is an absolutely stunning place. And the developers have done an amazing job of just making this all cyberpunky and just really, really cool. So I've got to give them props for that. We get Glooped on, which is essentially this monsters or aliens shit, like literally. Goop guy. I do goop stuff. Oh, oh, this fucking so Oh my god, the smell! Oh my god, I'm gonna fucking throw up. Okay, okay, I'm gonna hey, look at you. You're all gooped up. I gotta be which is like it acts as like a shield or a protection shield around us when we're doing this training. And we sit through a presentation on how to join the G3. As we move forward to try and find Douglas, we meet an octopus named Dr. Jupy, who says he needs our help to solve a few puzzles to get through the drains and save his wife and kids. So we help him through all the puzzles that we can find. But it turns out that he's actually Douglas in disguise. And he's played us this entire time. So we fight and defeat Douglas. And we meet Sweezy, which was a pretty interesting first interaction. All right, dipshit, let's go. What? No hello? Nice to meet you or thank you for saving me? Why? Like you not dying there with some sort of favor to me? Hi, I'm Sweezy. Thanks so much for rescuing me. How is that, dipshit? Now come on, use my time bubble to escape through the big fan in the corner. So once Sweezy was finished talking shit about us, we returned home and we're on the news. The magistrate is doing a press conference and he wants to meet us in person in order to try and team up with us to stop the G3 cartel. Gene sets up a meeting with him. We go through the portal and we're in his office. He basically gives us advice in order to try and save the humans. This is whenever we find a human, we can put them into a remote place and essentially stop them from turning into and being tortured on and tested and even smoked for that matter. We could also take out all of the cartel members for the bounties as well and just help the magistrate focus on other things. Basically for him to win the election. We accept and we return home and carry on with our business. However, we decide to take a trip to the pawn shop. But when we walk outside, we find someone selling something r really interesting to say the least. Over here, widow with the talking gun. I'm the little. Here's what's up. My name's Stan, and I sell vials of alien cum. I know that's probably not what you wanted to hear when you walked over here. You wanted cum or what? Wait, hold, hold, hold the phone. What the fuck? You sell alien cum? I know it's gross, but calm down. My name is Stan, and I sell horrendous amounts of all sorts of alien cum. And we're just gonna have to live with that knowledge together now. Did we look like people that would want to buy alien cum? Sure. Look, I have absolutely no idea. I'm shocked to my core every time somebody buys literally truckloads of alien cum from me. But they do it all the time. There's no rhyme or reason to it. I've been completely unable to narrow it down to a set of demographics. Grannies, cops, movie stars, politicians. Everybody likes my delicious alien cum. I've had every type of weirdo coming up here saying, I like 600 gallons of your absolute highest quality alien cum. And, and, and I say, does it matter which aliens the cum come from? And they say, no, sir, it truly does not. I just want some alien cum. No further details needed. So what, what's it going to be? You want some alien cum or not? All right, uh, listen, we thought it over and we'll take some alien cum. What the fuck? is this game. I brought a gallon. I'm sorry, I couldn't walk away without doing it. I brought a gallon of this stuff. Are you kidding me? Just gonna slowly walk away now with an ashamed face. Just slowly walking away. Yeah, th thanks very much. Thank you. Yeah, okay, okay. Anyway, we head to the pawn shop, buy a jetpack, and then off we go. We move forward into a facility where they look to be testing on humans trying to make hybrids of them in some way or other. Just hit the button. Yeah, sure. Whoa. Hmm. That wasn't supposed to happen. Yeah, no shit. Uh, that blood's on your hands, bounty hunter. You're the one who pushed the button. But hey, we all make mistakes. We make our way into one room and see another weapon. This weapon is named Creature. This guy is absolutely mental. Oh, hey, you look nice. 
My name's Creature. The bad guys did experiments on me and fucked me up real bad in basically every way you can imagine. Holy shit, am I glad to see another Cat Leon alive in here. Uh, are there any others? Oh my god, yes! There's so many! Oh, but unless you've been alive, then no! These fucking G3 bastards! Creature, we're taking on the cartel. You want in? Oh, no, no, no. They take good care of me. Holding me against my will, cutting me open, doing experiments on me. Okay, you know what? Saying it out loud, I think they might actually be bad. I'm part of your team now. Hell yeah! Welcome aboard, uh, creature. That, 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 that's your name? I guess so. Oh, hey, we're locked in, but that's fine. Don't freak out or anything. I can give birth to a bunch of little freaks and they can disable the door lock. It's fine. Creature gives birth to new members of his species, actually on the weapon, and we can see this happen, which he fires out of his ass, that opens new doors, and that apparently feels really good and wants us to keep making him make new babies. This game, man, is crazy. This is a mad game. Just reading this script now and realizing how ridiculously weird this game actually is blows my mind. I love it so much. Anyway, we use Creature's Babies to progress through and get to the final boss named Jonathan. We fight the boss, Jonathan gets away. We track it down and on our way, we find a facility with our first human in. The first human we found on our playthrough right now. Surely this guy has gone through some stuff. Tell me, dude, what has it been like being abducted by the G3? What are you watching in there? Uh, I guess it's supposed to be porn, but it's like alien porn, so I, I don't know. I, I honestly have no idea what I'm watching. I mean, I was able to get off to it, like, after a while. Um, honestly, now I love it, though. Uh, not sure why they want me to jack off this much, but, you know, I'm happy to do it. Like, all the tentacles and the moving parts, it's, I don't know, there's something really endearing about it. Yeah, I, I like it a lot, actually. I mean, if, if I ever get out of here, I, I hope I can, like, bring this with me, at least. I mean, I, I don't even think I could go back to normal porn after this. Nice! <sighs> okay, okay. Moving on. <laughs> we then meet Angela Screndel. A really nice first meeting with her too. Oh, really pleasant. Thank you, Angela. And then they're triplet a short time later. We destroy the Protron, and then suddenly on the big screen is Garmantuous. He says he's captured two people that are really important in our life. Immediately linking the dots, our parents are missing at the start of the game. So it must be them, right? This, of course, worries us, and we try to do whatever we can to save them. After this, we go home, and stood in the kitchen is Lizzie's new boyfriend, Tweeg. Jean starts to care for us and Lizzie, like that really overprotective dad. This is a really interesting dynamic between the two characters, as Lizzie's teenage outbursts start to happen more and more, and Jean begins to react more and more, with Tweeg just kind of standing there in the background like, what do I do here? Do I... <laughs> it's just a really interesting dynamic. So the next step in our plan to take down Garmantuous begins. But in order to be able to do that, we need some serious firepower. We needed to find someone called Dr. Giblets. Dr. Giblets would be able to help giving us exactly this. Giving us access to the most powerful weapon of all. But more on this shortly. However, in order to find him, we needed to do a little bit of detective work. But... Of course, it's the trial version of detective mode. What a surprise. So there's ads. Lots of fucking ads. We find someone called Michael Taint. Interesting name. Who tells us to speak with someone called Blorto. Blorto is a really dodgy food truck guy who tells us about a midnight launch of something called High on Life down in the slums. We push forward to the store and find out that it sells something called Hyperbongs. Basically, humans, moplets, anything you can smoke, basically, is one massive drugstore. We interrogate some of the employees using detective mode, and then we go to leave the store. We see two people in suits standing there, telling us to stay out of this. They look very much like the guy from earlier, Klug, the magistrate. Could he be a bad guy? Could he be working with the G3? So we return home from the store, and there are these guys again, standing straight in our living room. Apparently they represent the magistrate, Klug. And Klug is their father, which makes complete sense. Klug wants John Giblets dead too, and the suits have a lead on him. We go see Klug, and with the election being so close, he wants to be mayor. So he wants the G3 out of Blim City. To help us with this, 
He wants us to kill Dr. Giblets. Gives us a map, his coordinates, and off we go. We move back to Zephyr to look for Dr. Giblets. However, we suddenly come across a compound full of dead bodies. So, we activate detective mode, and we get to work. We decipher that Dr. Giblets was an expert at making cybernetic organisms. He was torturing his own henchmen. He was paranoid that people were out there trying to kill him, and then just went insane. We continue through the hallway, and suddenly we see Dr. Giblets through the door. I think that's Dr. Giblets. Uh, that was very anticlimactic, but I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not complaining. Jesus Christ, that was the easiest one yet. All right, let me add him. Well, that was a pretty quick boss fight. <laughs> anyway, Dr. Giblets is dead. Of course, we'll take the credit for it. We return back home and find out that from Jean that Lizzie's been missing for a while and he has no idea where she's gone. We're tasked with trying to find Lizzie before we take on any more bounties. However, as we make our way down to the place where Tweek works in the slums, Kenny has something that he's been meaning to tell us for a while. Yeah. Kenny seems really nervous about telling us this as well, so it must have been pretty serious. So, we walk into the restaurant to look for Tweek, but it's apparently not working there that day. So, we take a table, order a cocktail, and a bit of food, and get chatting to Kenny. Enjoy your meal. Your waiter will be with you shortly. Thank you. Okay, listen, I I'm sorry for making us sit here at Applebee's. I know we're really focused on Lizzie and that's kind of the important thing, but would you mind if I kind of got something off my chest here with you first? Whew, okay, thanks. You know, it's just, you know, it it's gonna weigh me down if I don't say something. Okay, so you remember what happened on my home planet, Gatlas? It got taken over by the G3, like yours. You know, all my people got enslaved. Y you remember that, right? You know all that, right? Sorry, of course you do. Well, um, what if it was kind of, you know, just a little tiny bit entirely my fault? <sighs> okay, I, I can see you're at a loss for words. I, I, I know how it sounds. I'm not the only reason the G3 invaded Gatlas. I'm just the only reason they even knew about it in the first place. Hey there, welcome to Applebee's. I'm going to be your waiter for the day. Can I get you started with one of our signature cocktails? Uh, no. Okay, sure thing. I'm going to go ahead and get that in for you. Uh, thank you. Okay, Bounty Hunter, so l l let me explain. Gatlas was isolated on the far edge of an asteroid belt. We were completely untouched by the greater interstellar civilization, j just like your planet. But, you know, I, I wanted out. Like, I wanted to see the galaxy. I wanted to see what everything out there had to offer. That's when Rel Del Mar crashed his ship into our planet. He was this crazy smuggler. He, he'd been all over and he'd seen it all. And, 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 and after I helped him fix his ship, he wanted me to be a part of his crew, you know? And he, he took me with him. And I'm back. Here we go. This is for you. All right, now what were you thinking for an appetizer? Uh, I'm sorry. We're in the middle of something, please. Great, it's coming right up. Oh, I don't know why I picked Applebee's to tell you this, but wh where were we? Okay, oh, right, um, obviously a guy like Rel, you know, he had to deal with all kinds of shady customers, and well, you know, that led us to the G3, and Garmantuous, you know, he'd never seen an alien like me, you know, a talking gun with endless firepower, and well, looking back, you know, I see how stupid I was, you know, I, I really do, but at the time, I couldn't tell, you know, I was being taken advantage of. I was going nowhere. No, everyone thought I was a fuck up. You know, I, I just wanted to prove to everyone that I could do something, you know? Open up. Here comes the appetizer train. Chicka, 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 choo choo. Thank you. I ho hope you like those. Now you better be ready to order that main course. You betcha. I'm going to get that order right to the cook. Okay, thank you. So. I led the G3 right to Gatlas. Do you see where I'm going with this? We fought them off at first, you know, but they came back with some super virus that damn near zombified everyone. You know, a few of us were immune. We formed a rebellion. It was led by Let's Do It. He was my best friend, my mentor. He was one of the strongest Gatlians who ever lived, and I, I got him killed. In his dying moments, I told him everything, like I'm telling you now about how I left Gatlas to pal around with a criminal, how I led Garmantuous and the G3 right to our planet, how I got everyone killed, except Let's Do It survived. 
somehow. The G3 must have kept him alive to try to utilize his power. God, if we can really bring him back, do you, do you see my problem, right? Like, I, I'm gonna have to tell the other guns what I did, you know, or else he'll tell them. All right, I'm back. Hope those tummies are ready for some yummies. Bon appetit. Dude, take a fucking hint. Can't you see we're in the middle of a thing here? Emotional thing. Uh, you know, this is important baggage shit we're dealing with here. Take a hint and get out of here for a second. Uh-oh, someone's feeling grumpy. Well, suddenly as we're telling the story, we look out the window, and there's Lizzie and Tweeg. We run outside, of course not forgetting to pay the bill, we don't want to be rude, and we're ambushed by the G3 again. It turns out that Gene was advertising us as a bounty hunter to do additional tasks for a little bit of extra money outside of the bounty, 5,000, and somehow the G3 managed to find out where we lived. He included our address on the ad. <laughs> we fight our way back home and find out that Garmantuous had sent his forces to kill us after finding out of our home address on the ad. There was no way we could stay here now, However, Kenny had a great idea to jump the house to another location, like we did at the start of the game. Gene, listen carefully and enter these exact coordinates. new place there was no sign of life outside as we go outside though welcome to gatlas my home planet jesus i didn't realize it was this bad fuck there's nothing left this was our home pretty soon earth is gonna look like this too we have got to stop the g3 bitch sorry nobody answered me i asked if this was our home anyone regroup inside and head on to bed for some well-needed sleep. Alright, you're finally up. Okay, let's get back to it, I guess, you know? I, I, I hope Gene has a lead on Lizzie. Let's go. Yeah, look who finally decided to wake up. You know, we wake sometime later and make our way downstairs. Gene tells us that he knows where Lizzie's gone and sets up the portal for us to walk straight through and find her. We go through the portal and we're on Tweak's ship and there they are. We convince Lizzie to come back, talk them both through their relationship issues and Lizzie decides to end it with Tweak there and then. I mean, it was a bit of a weird relationship, let's be real. You could be pregnant, and I would fucking wonder how that happened. My cum goes all over outside of your body. Well, okay. I don't know if it's good either. Your body is really confusing. God, I'm just so confused. Aren't we in love? When we get back to the house, though, Kenny decides to do something really brave. Tell the others of the downfall of Gatlas. Hey, everybody. I, I, I need to come clean about... Uh, well, this is way tougher than I thought. Spit it out! Yeah, spit it out! No, I I, I can't. I, you're gonna hate me. Dad, th we, we don't have secrets. We're a family! Well, hold on. I might decide to hate him. It's okay, Kenny. You can tell us. Oh, just fucking say it. Okay, fine. If you don't hear it from me, you're just gonna hear it from Les Dewitt when he wakes up. Okay, what if I were to tell you that I'm the reason the G3 invaded Gatlas and enslaved our race? And they didn't take it very well. This is all sorts of fucked up, Kenny. I don't even know what to say. See? I'm not the biggest fuck up here. Not now, dude. Everyone, please. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I, I didn't know what I was doing. We're so close to taking down the G3. Let's just... Oh, okay. Let's just pretend you're not the reason everyone we know and love is dead, yeah? Sure. But they decide to put it all to one side and find Nipilom, the second most powerful member of the G3, and our next bounty. We needed to do a couple of side missions in order to get to Nipilon, 
One of them is to get the Mac and Cheese Brothers' father to tell them that he loves them. This proved to be harder than we thought when meeting the father. Anyway, I'm Papa Mac and Cheese Brothers. What can I do you for? Oh, uh, we met your kids over at the construction site. Oh, is that so? Yeah. And how are those good-for-nothing pieces of shit doing? They just sent us here to get the confirmation that you love them. That's it. But I hate them. They're shit heels. They ain't fit for the Mac and Cheese Brothers' name. Wait, are you... What? Are, you, you don't really want us to tell them that. Yeah. Tell them I said I hate them, and I hope they all fucking die. Now leave me the fuck alone. Uh, okay. I guess that's that then. You are... You're a tough guy, Papa Mac and Cheese Brothers. However, we told the brothers a bit of a lie. And, well, this happened. Hey, so what, what, what did Papa say, huh? D does he love us or not? Your dad, um, he loves you very much. Holy shit, did he, did he really say that? Yes, he did. Oh my god, I'm, oh my god, I'm freaking out, you guys. He, he fucking loves us, you hear that? He, uh, Papa, Papa loves us. God, I can't handle whatever I'm feeling. It is, it is, what is, 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 is this love? Is this what love is? Oh god, I, I yeah. can't handle whatever this feeling is. Is this, oh my god, is, is this love? Jesus, these guys need therapy. But hey, looks like we can cross now, though. I know. Ah, you're back. Oh, fucking figured it out. Oh, wow. Oh, we did it. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. I ain't never seen nothing like this. It's beautiful. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, see you, oh, see you later. We made a bridge Who alone. knew we could just make a bridge what with love? love? Anyway, in order for us to push through, we need to get gooped on, aka shit on by another weird alien. And we move through some spa and look for Nippilon. And bro, what? is this section of the game literally massive things that look like dicks inhaling humans like they're hyperbongs like this was the most creeped out that i've been in this entire playthrough the entire time to then start sharing a room with one of these things and hearing them speak about how the humans make them feel extremely great and how the high is just next level these dumb fuckers get you so high fight baby one a couple hours ago and i swear i can't even remember my own name right now yeah, I wish they lasted a little longer. You can suck these humans dry way too fast, but they hit so good. Waiters, bring me six more humans. More babies if you got them. I like them best young and innocent. Hey, waiter, can I get a few more humans when I get a chance? Of course, sir. I hope you don't mind sharing your booth with another guest. We're a bit overbooked today. Sorry. Yeah, you ever try human? This shit's amazing. Ooh, yeah. Look how dumb they look. All hairy and weak. You're lucky they gave you so fucking high. Otherwise, they'd be a waste of a species. Oh, fuck. I love seeing the light leave their eyes. Yeah, fuck this. Do what you have to do. What's wrong? Why you give me that look? What, you don't want me talking about it? Oh, what the fuck? Alright, we're doing this! Before we just snap and murder the one next to us. Finally, after fighting through, we save a bunch of humans and then get up to the suite where Nipulon is based. And again, there's Helen. <laughs> Hunter. <laughs> it's Helen. <laughs> Can I just call you BH? <laughs> I won't. Nipulon will see you shortly. Just, you know. Can I get you anything? Helen, well, what are you doing here? Yep, you keep killing all my bosses, so I have to keep finding new ones to work for. <laughs> Why don't you take a seat for a moment? We literally have to take a seat and wait for the boss to tell us that he's ready before we can walk through the door. Whew, good idea. Let's rest those legs. We got we got something coming up here. Nipulon is finally ready, and Helen calls us in. So we walk into his office, and we start by fighting him. Then Nipulon decides to go ahead and drug us, using humans' fumes, and causes us to have all of these weird-looking, trippy episodes. Anyway, we finally defeat him in an epic way, using all four of our weapons at once, which was so damn cool and make our way home. Holy shit, okay, we're back. I think we're back. That was a lot. Is, is everyone okay? 
It looks like we really killed him at least. He's he's dead. I'm your wife, Kenny. I feel bad. And, I, and I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, me too. I love you guys. Gene fixes up our old friend named Les. We let out a massive fart. Oh, for fuck's sake. You know, I thought you were actually going to say something nice. And Les is alive. Uh, I mean, kind of, yeah. I mean, he can't really say anything else other than his name. But, yeah, let's fight Garmantuous. Let's do it. Les, I, I can't. Let's do it. I'm so sorry. I, let's do it. I, I can't believe I didn't have to tell everybody what I did. Kenny, are you kidding me right now? Fuck off, Kenny. Kenny. Fuck off. What? What? I, and I'm happy to see my friend, okay? Fuck. See, I'm not the worst scumbag here. Let's do it turns out to be some extremely overpowered Gatlin that obliterates every single enemy in its path. This was so damn fun to use throughout this part of the game. And then finally, there he is, Garmantuous. We initially destroy Garmantuous's flight device, then we move to shove the bomb Gene gave us straight up his ass. Yeah, yeah, shove that bomb all the way up his asshole, into his intent, or whatever's up there. Okay, that should be good. Now pull out and let's blow this fucker up. It's time for the G3 to become the G0. Suck my ass. Okay, what's wrong? Is, 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 is it broken? God damn it, Gene, the remote's busted? However, the remote was busted, and then he traps us there and then. You're fucking done. Now it's time to make you really suffer. Rewinding a little bit into the story, Garbantuous captured two of the people that we loved most on Earth. Remember that earlier on? How we thought it was our parents? Well, <laughs> no, it wasn't our parents. It was these guys. Uh, hey, it's me, Jack Black. Hi, I'm Susan Sarandon. Do we know you? Huh? Are those your parents? Parents? What, what the fuck are you talking about? I don't think the bounty hunter even knows these people. Yeah, we don't. But it's so nice to meet you. So what? You don't love these two? Because every human I asked said they loved them. Well, yeah, everyone loves us. I'm sorry, bounty hunter. I'm sure your parents are still out there somewhere, you know? They're alive. I, I, I can feel it. <laughs> okay, bounty hunter. Enough fucking around. Let's finish this. This was so amazing, and I, I, I love this little plot twist. It's so funny seeing Jack Black turn up on that thing. <laughs> Bravo! You got me. You got me. So we defeat our mantras for sure this time. However, the only way to properly kill him is to manually detonate the bomb, and to do this. Kenny has a plan. I know a way to detonate it. I knew you'd figure it out, Kenny. I'll go inside of his asshole, and I'll detonate it manually. Oh, that's not good. Kenny, that would mean. Yeah, I know. Kenny, we're not letting you do that, okay? There's got to be another way. Can you think of anything? Actually, no, I can't. I guess this is the only way. You're going to blow both yourselves up? Kenny, you might die. I, I know. Hey, bounty hunter, fighting alongside you has been, well, it's been the best thing that's ever happened to me. Thank you for giving me the adventure of a lifetime. Now shove me deep inside that monster slug's dirty asshole. Kenny! I want to do this. I, I need to do this. Just let me do this, bounty hunter. It's the only way. Travel- Okay. Okay. Well, I guess this is goodbye. You're the best bounty hunter I've ever seen. And you're an even better friend. See you later, pal. I'll always be with you, and I love you. Oh, 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 shit, it's done. Come out to us, it's dead. He's fucking dead. Rest in peace, fucker. Good work, bounty hunter. What about? There's no way they could have survived that. What a noble sacrifice. I can't believe it. No fucking way. Oh my god, they survived, they made it. Let's do it. I'm, I'm alive? Is Garmantuous dead? We owe you big time. The whole universe owes you. Now you're a fucking hero. I'm so glad you made it. We did it. Kenny crawled into Garmantuous's ass and manually detonated the bomb. 
saving planet Earth. What a noble act, Kenny. Congratulations. Ah, you know what? Let's take a bit of time to retire in a cottage. Chill out a little bit. A nice bit of a change of pace. We can watch a bit of TV. We can chill out. Um, Company. what? No way. I just put this no, why are the devs making me do this? No, 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 no. Please, oh no. Oh my god, I didn't know Lugloxes could talk. No, no, I've been murdering these things for the entire campaign. No. No, this can't be how it ends. Please don't make me do it. I can't do this to a family. No. No. We'll be taking this loot, I guess. Jesus Christ. <laughs> it had to be done. It had to be done. Holy shit. Is that, is that some sort of miniature town? Oh, hello there. Oh, fantastic. You've decided to take a look around Little Cutie Town. Oh, I'm so excited for you to see everything Little Cutie Town has to offer. Oh my god! Oh, no, 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 my whole, my whole town, my whole little cutie town's ruined. You ruined the whole city and all my friends are dead. I'm the only last little cutie alive and I am going to kill myself, I guarantee it. As soon as you walk away, I'm going to be so depressed I just pop a gun in my own head and I die. I'm just going to fucking die. How's that sound? No more living for me. I don't want to be alive. My whole town and home is gone and dead and you did it. It's your fault. I know I invited you in, but you should have realized it's so okay. You're going to ruin things. You should have told me. I didn't think about it. I'm kind of dumb sometimes, but you're you're not as dumb as me, I, I assume, so you should have said, hey, I'm not going to go in there. I don't want to stomp on shit like a big Godzilla. Not for me. Not, my, not what I want to do with my life. I don't want to go kill everybody. That's what you should have said. Instead, you just did it. You walked in and you knocked over entire buildings. Everyone's dead now. I am, I am so sad. I'm so fucking sad right now. I know that I, I mostly I'm just yelling. But if you if you let me just calm down for a second. Ooh, uh, yeah, I don't. I. Uh, whoa, Jesus! I wasn't sure if you were gonna actually kill him. Poor guy. You know, maybe it was the right thing to do.